The American Southwest is a great place to be if you are looking for free or very low cost travel. I've been blown away at all the beautiful free spots we have been able to camp while visiting some amazing places. For the past several weeks, my family and I have been traveling across America on a very long road trip. We have been staying in our rooftop tent, but a lot of these free places are suitable for RVs, vans, and car campers too. So come spend the day with us while we are camping for free Yay. in the American Southwest desert. So our day really starts the evening before. When we get to a new campsite, I set up all of our solar chargers. Um, this is a light that we keep up in the tent with us in the evenings and it is run on solar. Sometimes I'll put it in the dash while we're driving down the road. And then we also have a big battery bank that that we recharge from solar panels. This thing has been awesome and stays charged for days and days. So I didn't actually need to charge it, but I am charging up the Kindle. This is very helpful when we're driving to entertain our 15 month old. <laughs> Glitch. <laughs> so good. Good morning. We are currently staying on BLM land, which is free land in Arizona. Today is a moving day, so we are about to pack up camp and head to a new location. We are going to be going to Joshua Tree National Park is our goal destination. There's some more free BLM land outside of the park, so that is our destination for today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pack up all of our sleeping bags and everything up in the tent. Just a little tip is I keep my clothes in my sleeping bag like protector to keep all the condensation out of my clean clothes for that day. And we are traveling with a dog and a cat. The cat has free rain of our tent we have a rooftop tent with an annex and the annex is like a downstairs part of the tent so she's able to climb up the ladder and go up and down and really enjoys being up in the tent and being able to look outside at all of the cool stuff as we are traveling we are also traveling with a 15 month old and we use the sleep sack at night and our toddler super loves being in the sleep sack and will like ask to go in there at at bedtime. And we are from the southeast, so it is very humid there. So one of the differences that I have learned about the southwest in the desert is it actually gets really cold at night, even when it's really warm during the day. So that has been interesting we have zero degree bags and we have never really had an issue with it being cold it usually the 40s is about as cold as we let it get we kind of followed the weather but we are about to fold up the tent so you can put some of your blankets and stuff like that in the tent but not everything you we have kept our sleeping bags up there just kind of spread out but it actually makes the tent a little bit harder to close than we want it to so we just find that it's easier to pack up the sleeping bags and leave the blankets and a couple other things up there this is kind of all of the stuff that our cat needs it's been a lot more challenging to travel with a cat than with our dog because she needs a litter box and while we're traveling in the car she is in a cat carrier a storage container with the lid has been a great litter box system for us We have tried letting her loose in the car, but it's just kind of more stressful for her. She likes being in this kennel and even at night, usually I'll like leave it open and she just hops in there and naps in that carrier and just, she likes it. So this is the annex part of our tent and this is optional. Not everybody has an annex, but just because we have so many people and pets, 
the annex itself is advertised to sleep four people and the tent is advertised to sleep four people so theoretically eight people could sleep in here um probably not super comfortably but this definitely gives us enough room to live comfortably and have a enough private space we also camp outside so we have tons of outdoor space we cook outside we hang out outside really only go in our tent to like change our clothes and sleep how can you help us So this place where we were staying this night was just off of Interstate 8 in the Mohawk Mountain area of Arizona. And there is so much free public land in the Southwest that you can really stay for free during your entire trip um, if you are able to go off like off grid and boondocking. We like to mix up like our where we stay at night between some free boondocking sites and then sometimes we'll find some inexpensive campgrounds to stay in that have some amenities like showers and laundry because we are on a long-term trip so we do you know need to take showers occasionally and do some laundry. You can also find inexpensive laundry mats on your trip, which is actually today on our to-do list, is laundry. And I did find a laundry mat that was really inexpensive on our way to our next destination. And then some people will have like a membership to Planet Fitness to take showers in Planet Fitness along their trip, which is a great idea because I think you can get a Planet Fitness membership for like 10 or $15. So our rooftop tent is an extra large rooftop tent and they make them much smaller and much more convenient to put together. But we really needed something that was really big. Um, so this rooftop tent, you know, there's pros and cons. It is really big, but is a little bit more difficult to put up than a, like a hard top rooftop tent. There was a little bit of a learning curve when we first got it trying to figure out how to efficiently put it together but we kind of have it figured out now and we can put it together pretty quickly and easily getting it kind of like set up to to fold up is kind of like the most challenging part but now that we have it all set up we just just fold it up and put the cover over it and you're ready to go so does anybody else have a toddler who is obsessed with the dog water bowl? Look at Falcon knowing that they were not supposed to do that. <laughs> but who can resist water and mud? If we didn't have the annex, this cover could just stay on it. So this is kind of like an extra step that we do because we have the annex and the annex kind of slides into the same slot that the cover slides into. So we do have to take the cover up off in order to put the annex up. You can see our dog down there judging Falcon for spilling their water. This is the annex and we just throw it in this bag and toss it in the back of our truck. Before we hit the road, I fill up everybody's water bottle and I make us some coffee. We just do dehydrated coffee and water. Sometimes I will heat up the water, but sometimes we just drink it cold or room temperature, whatever water we have. We fill up our water jugs. We have two of these five gallon jugs at national parks always have free water fill stations uh there's also where you can pay to fill up your water it's like i think like a dollar or two for five gallons but we haven't had to do that yet we've found free places to fill up our water 
this is the road out of the campsite where we stayed at. We use the app iOverlander. I've talked about that in like several of my last videos. It is amazing for finding great camping spots, water fill stations, laundry, like that has been our go-to app on this trip. That's where we found this site and it gives you the GPS coordinates that you can just type into Google. Um, this road is fine for even like an RV or camper. Some of the spots it says if you need four-wheel drive or if it's bumpy or a camper won't go on there when you're looking on the app. But a lot of the BLM land out here is good for all types of rigs. Look at this vulture. It's a very vulture. Ominous sign. Yeah, it is. It's a very vulture tree. It is. <laughs> So we just hopped back on the main road and the town where we're going to do laundry is like less than 15 minutes away. So we're just going to head there and do a one big load of laundry. <laughs> That's pretty cute though. So we've been to some pretty expensive laundry mats and have learned our lesson. This one was not, and this one's very affordable. It was $1.50 to try a load of clothes and $2.50 to wash a load of clothes. I am someone who just throws all of our laundry in together and washes it on cold. was honestly a really cute laundry mat and just a real tiny low-income town in the southwest desert i love these little libraries where they have lots of books and we found a couple books really cute. for falcon baby oh, that's very specific donkeys and asher maybe found him a book too Aww. While we were waiting on our laundry to get done, we had a little snack and we also talked to a guy who now owns property in this town, but he used to live out on BLM land in this mm. same area in the Mohawk Mountain where we had stayed the night before. He said he lived there for an entire season one year. He used to come down there and stay during the winter. And he ended up loving the area so much that he bought property there. A lot of people think that the people who are living out here for free on BLM land um, are homeless or there's something wrong with them for choosing to do this. But it is honestly such a cool experience. And we have met and talked to some really cool people who are choosing to live this life. And it just validates what we are doing. The most expensive part of our trip has by far been gas and we did have to stop and get gas today. This gas pump added 35 cents for using our debit card and it also originally said that it was 279 and then it was 269 so it's very confusing. We have had to be very vigilant about making sure that we get gas often because there are huge time periods that we drive when there are no gas stations at all and we knew that today was going to be one of those days. This was right after we crossed the Colorado River and ended up in California. There's these huge sand dunes. That has been one of the coolest experiences while we've been out here is just the change of ecosystems so quickly. You can go from mountains to sand dunes to just flat desert to scrubby trees to like it just changes so much so quick and that's been my favorite part about visiting the southwest I've also learned things about 
all these regions of the country that I didn't know. Like, apparently Southern California is a huge agricultural zone. This is a huge dairy farm. But there were also tons of, like, plants and vegetables and everything growing in this area. Apparently, the soil here is very fertile and great for growing things. We had to stop and have another little snack. Falcon had one of these pouches and then everybody had some pico and tostito chips. For food storage, we do have just a basic cooler and in order to keep our ice lasting longer is we keep some dry ice underneath the regular ice and that helps keep the ice frozen. You don't want the dry ice touching your food because it'll ruin your food. So when we woke up this morning, we were planning on driving all the way to Joshua Tree, but on our way up, we found this really cool spot. It was a free spot where we could camp on the beach. Um, there's this place called Salt and Sea, and it's like 200 feet below sea level, and it's this really salty lake, and there was this old ghost town called Bombay Beach. We saw on iOverlander that you could camp on this beach for free, so we thought we would stop by and see what it was like, and we did decide to stay. So I had to look up the history of this place, and back in the 40s and 50s, it was like a vacation area for wealthy people of California to come and hang out on the beach and it flooded at some point a few decades ago and just never recovered. Now there are people that live here in trailers and such and make interesting art on the beach and while we were there we talked to there was some guy that owned the radio station in town and there was apparently a film festival going on while we were there. And then the next weekend, there was going to be an art festival. So you can drive on the beach here. And we kind of drove around and looked at some of the cool art and picked a spot for us to set up camp. That's moving back to the beach. <laughs> right? <laughs> Because we've been driving for a little while, we try and get out and set up camp as quickly as we can. The cat's been in her kennel, the dog's been in the car, Falcon's been in their car seat for a while, so... We had a couple hours to just chill and relax and then we started on dinner and we still try and eat super healthy even while we're traveling and also really inexpensive. So we just have a whole bunch of veggies that we cut up and added the seasoning to and we're just gonna cook this over the fire. Falcon also had some like quinoa, avocado, Falcon? pico mix. They're growing, so they need a little extra fat and 
calories in their diet. So they had a little, they had a little appetizer before our veggies were done. We kind of cook our food a variety of ways, just depending on where we're at. Tonight we use this like little charcoal grill thing that we have. You can also put wood in it, charcoal, just whatever. It's really cheap, portable grill set that we got off of Amazon. Sometimes we cook just over a campfire. We also have a propane cooktop outdoor camping stove that we use sometimes too. So we ate this either over tortillas with some pico, some plant-based sour cream, and some tortilla chips. Or in a big bowl with some sweet potato. Falcon, don't do it. You know you're not supposed to. Ah. Gotcha. Say, hey, say good night, son. Can you say good night? Good night, sunshine. Taboo, come here. Where are you going? He tried to go say hi to another dog a second ago. We were not the only ones camping on the beach this night. You can see there were some RVs way down over there. We were pretty much by ourselves though, and it was pretty private. Going on a walk. We're walking. We're walking. So, so, weird. so this was some of the stuff on the beach. It was art, but also pretty interesting. I didn't really get it. Some of it. I'm sure maybe if I did a little more research on the history of the place, I would understand what was going on here a little bit better. And I'm also sure that people utilize this art as a hangout spot sometimes. Do what? That's nice. This was just one of the many, many places that we stayed while we are traveling through New Mexico, Arizona, and now California. This has definitely been the most abstract place we have ever stayed. Usually it's much more secluded and in nature. Say goodnight, kitty. Good night. Is that your kitty cat? <coughs> Once it got dark, we climbed into our tent to get ready for bed. And the next day, we continued our journey on to Joshua Tree National Park. <coughs>